Welcome back, everybody, to the Minnesota Twins franchise on MLB The Show 18. It's episode 75 as the season winds down here in year three. We've done so much to build this team, and we're so close to the postseason, but we haven't played our best baseball since the All-Star break, and now we've fallen out of first place in the AL Central. We're still in good shape in terms of a wild card berth, but I don't want a wild card after the way we started this season and the roster we put together. To put it all in the hands of one game, no thanks. With the expanded rosters here in September, we are adding some key players from AAA, such as shortstop Nick Gordon, who was with us in spring training and shined, but his year at AAA was not that great. Gary Tedano also gets the call up to the majors, along with Joe Maurer. He was down at AAA for a lot of this season. We're going to begin today's action out in New York against the Yankees. I honestly feel like the Twins' strongest rivalry has to be with the Yankees and their inability to get past them in the postseason and the constant struggles against this team. So the Twins trying to get some victories here on the road in their remaining series. Charlie Blackman facing Luis Severino and following off a 2-2 pitch. Getting into an early battle to start the day, doing his job as the leadoff batter, he draws a nine-pitch walk. Jorge Polanco gets the start and hits in the two spot to get some more lefties up toward the top of the order. And Gene Segura able to tag Blackman and get Polanco at first for the double play. Nobody aboard for Paul Goldschmidt, and he'll send the first pitch out to left center. Way back! That is gone into the bullpen! No one on base to bring home with him, but it's number 35 for Paul Goldschmidt. It's 430 feet. That was just not a pitch you can lay off. Severino left it right over the middle, and that gives the Twins a slim lead for their ace, Dallas Keuchel, 16 and six. Not sure if he has the time to get to 20 victories, but just focus on number 17 right here as he hits the first batter, Segura, and then a wild pitch. Without having to swing the bat, the Yankees get a runner in scoring position for Franklin Barreto. Lined into center and down for a hit, Barreto's first of the season, and Segura races all the way home to tie the game. Just four pitches in, already some trouble here for Keuchel, and then a drive from Michael Brantley. He's out of the division, but still a problem for Minnesota. Brantley sends out his 22nd of the season, and the Yankees take a 3-1 lead. That solo shot by Goldschmidt was not a worry for this team as they quickly take a two-run advantage, but they weren't finished. Into the right field, that is down for another hit. That is Franklin Gutierrez on the double, bringing up Devin Mezzarocco and a mound visit for Dallas Keuchel. Just seven pitches in, already having to settle him down. Not a good start. Mezzarocco swings and misses. Keuchel one and two, there we go with the slider. Just get settled in, we can still have a good day here. Two down for the Yankees, and a grounder to the right side. We finally get it together, but the Yankees get their runs on the board. Twins down two as we head to the second. Daniel Palka gets the start, another lefty here to face Severino. Rips it to deep right, and it's tracked down out near the warning track by Paulo Orlando. Mitch Garver up next, he'll line this to right center. What a season, everybody. Garver hitting 316 coming into this matchup. Miguel Sano hitting 300. This is high in the air, and it gets down for a base hit. Twins get two straight singles off Severino, and that brings up Byron Buxton. We saw him come through in a big way last episode. Now in a full count situation, runners go, and Buxton pops it up into foul territory. Unfortunately, too much foul territory out there. Still 3-1, Dallas Keuchel hoping for a better second inning, and there is the strikeout on former twin Trevor Plouffe. With two away, just trying to get out of the inning, but Gene Segura not going to make it so easy. Gets it far enough into the gap, and his speed is easily in at second base. He's in scoring position again. Two batters later, Michael Brantley once again. Two on, three one count, and driven to the gap again. Buxton will not lay out for it. Instead, just gets it on a hop. It would have been a really risky play. Brantley drives in another 4-1 Yankees. Tough start here for Minnesota after the solo home run. 
spot. We do get two more base runners in the third. Jorge Polanco delivers. Nelson Cruz actually at DH in this game. Don't worry. And that's high in the air to center. Charlie Blackman ready to tag up, and he heads to third base. Relay throw is there, but not in time. Again, a risky play by Minnesota. It ends up working out, and we give Daniel Palka a chance. Oh, and one fastball blown by him. He falls behind to Severino, then turns on a pitch. Deep right field, tie game. Three-run homer off the bat of Daniel Palka, whose season hasn't gone the way we had hoped. But what a big time for that three-run homer to come through. Severino tries to go inside, just attacking Palka. Just like with the home run from Goldschmidt, it was a great hitter's pitch. And the Twins are able to tie it up for Keuchel. Two down, facing Trevor Plouffe again, getting ahead in the count. Keuchel throws the changeup outside, and Plouffe goes around. Strike three. He's not happy about it. On to the fourth inning, still tied at four. Here's Charlie Blackman. He'll strike out as Severino gets the 1-2-3 inning. Pitchers may be settling down a bit, but here's a line drive into the right field corner for New York. They get another double. This one from the number nine hitting Paulo Orlando, who also got his first hit of the season right there. Gene Segura 0-2, line to center. The speed of Orlando around third base. Yankees take the lead again. A really uncharacteristic outing here for Dallas Keuchel. No 1-2-3 innings. Yankees continue to get good contact off of him. Two on, nobody down. That's going to left center. It'll plate another run for New York. Another RBI for Brantley. Five in his first three trips to the plate. Next up, Franklin Gutierrez, still nobody down. At this point, Jeremy Jeffress was warming up in the bullpen. Full count, and driven out to left field. Yankees open up the lead big time. It's bouncing up into the second deck. Gutierrez launches number 25, and suddenly, 9-4 Yankees. Just when I thought we were making things interesting. Yankees go and ruin those hopes just as they've done every time the Twins have visited this stadium. Dallas Keuchel only lasts three innings, allowing nine runs, 11 hits, just a bad start. And that was ultimately the end of the scoring. Yankees get the victory, sending us to 79 and 62. Of course, this was the outing where Buddy Boshears had a couple innings and he didn't allow a run. This was the time. At least the Twins came back the next day and put up more runs to get the victory. Going for the series split now against New York, let's jump into a critical situation. Late in the game, tied at one, Tyler Duffy on the mound, already like 50 pitches into his day, trying to get Gary Sanchez out, and he's not able to do it. Pitching around him with the bases empty to get to Chris Carter. There's some high heat, two and two, Ground ball, third base, Miguel Sano sends us to extra innings. These games are so critical. It's going to be a very tight division race, so taking these games at the end is maybe what makes the difference at the end of the season. We have Josh Harrison reaching and taking off for second. Sanchez, perfect throw, and there to get Harrison at second. Next pitch, Maurer strikes out. Bad sequence there for Minnesota. In the bottom of the 10th, we turn things to Tyler J, who's actually had a pretty good stretch of games ever since I called him up. I had to get another lefty here in the bullpen, and he's done a really good job. There's the fastball upstairs, a strikeout for J. And that brings up another lefty, Jacoby Ellsbury, who falls behind 0-2. Won't offer on the circle change. Next pitch from J. Breaking ball hung up, and that's driven out to deep right. Fair and gone, game over. Walk off homer for Jacoby Ellsbury and the Twins drop another and this series to the Yankees. Should have known this was gonna be how it all ended. Just a really bad pitch, they're not even close on the meter. Ended up hanging up there and despite facing the lefty, Ellsbury able to crush it. Then we go from New York to Boston. And we get some good news that the Red Wings have won their first playoff series. That's great. Same thing with the Lookouts down at AA. We have a good farm system. But unfortunately, this tour of the East Coast not going our way. 
trying to salvage a game here at the end in the rain against the Red Sox at Fenway. 2-1 Twins. Rysel Iglesias on the mound. We traded to the Red Sox to acquire him. So a bit of a revenge game element here as he does record the first out. And then what happens? The umpires decide we got to have ourselves a rain delay. We're in the ninth inning with one out. Our closer is in and they want to delay the game for 45 minutes, which is just about enough time to watch yesterday's Cardinals rebuild video over on my second channel. Maybe that's what they wanted to do. They just couldn't wait. Jeremy Jeffress comes into the game approximately 45 minutes later. He is now in position to close the game. Here's Blake Swihart, sinker on the inside corner. Jeffress, oh, almost got him on that breaking ball. Three and two, grounded to short. Escobar to first, two down. Just one more out to go. Facing Jackie Bradley Jr. Two and one, got him to chase the sinker. Three and two, lifted to center. Buxton over a few steps. He's got it, and the Twins get the victory here in Boston. Still lose the series to the Red Sox, but just got to get as many wins out here as we can. Obviously, it just hasn't gone our way in the second half of the season like we saw in the first, for whatever reason. The pitching maybe hasn't been as good, but it just seems like the team overall might not be quite as good. Dallas Keuchel gets the victory, by the way. But in the meantime, Cleveland was playing really good baseball, and they opened up their lead to four games. That did not make me feel really good about our chances at winning the division. We're still in good shape here for the wild card, but man, I can't believe it might come down to that. The Lookouts end up winning the AA championship, as I believe they did a year ago. I mentioned last episode we're not going to follow their playoffs as closely this year because we did so much a year ago. So on to a new game against the White Sox, going for the sweep, strike three from Rysel Iglesias to Jose Abreu. Thankfully, no rain to speak of this time. Iglesias versus Yoan Moncada, down to the last strike, and ripped into left field. That'll reach the wall, it's extra bases. Chicago gets the game tying run in scoring position. Now we hit the next batter, so it's up to Avisail Garcia, hitting 244 on the year, 0 for 3 on the day. First pitch swinging, and out to Byron Buxton. He's got it, and the Twins win again. Big sweep here at home. We needed a series like this. We don't have many home series left, so we need these wins at Target Field while they're there for the taking. Mike fulton gives us the good outing this time. We get four straight victories and now have back-to-back -back series at home against KC and Toronto. Unfortunately, the AAA Red Wings did not win their championship. They are the runners-up. So now we're left with four series to go. Everybody now on our 40-man roster has joined the Twins' active roster. Here was the final box score for Rochester as Fernando Romero gave them a pretty good outing. But no run support and the bullpen didn't fare too well. Meanwhile, the Lookouts lost one game in their postseason run. They're just too stacked at pitcher and with the lineup they have down there, we have a good system. So this sweep of Chicago helped us make up some ground. Now we're just one and a half games back and we're obviously in first place now for the wild card spot. So I really think that that last series, we have a four game series against Cleveland to end the year, and I think that is going to decide everything. What's favorable for us is that we still have two series against Kansas City, and they're just overall not a very good team. So we have a good chance to win those two series, but then we have series against Toronto and Cleveland to finish. I think we'll have two more episodes here in the regular season. We'll see how next one goes. I definitely want to save the Cleveland series for the last episode of the regular season. But this is Cleveland's schedule now the rest of the way. All road games until they face us. So I'm hoping we can have that lead back in our possession by the time we have that four game series in Cleveland. That's gonna be big. That's all for today's episode everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. And what I've thought about now going forward here, at least in the near future, is kind of doing a thing with the Twins franchise and the Kalispell Dynasty where I'll post, say I posted two Kalispell videos last week 
Now this week I'm posting two Twins franchise videos in just one Callus Spell video. So next week I do two Callus Spell and one Twins video. I think that would give it a little bit better balance and to still allow me to do more in my Dolphins franchise. So let me know what you think about that and let me know what you thought of today's episode. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe and join the notification squad down below in the comment section. Hit the bell for those notifications and I'll see you again soon. Have a great day.